Sloths, what's going on? It's Nick Avocado. We're back home. Shooby doo, we're home. Hello, we're back home. Shooby doo, we're home. Hello, and this is hot and steamy because we're eating KFC together. Yay! I had a very hard workout today, okay? I worked out for one hour, which is a big step up from what I've been doing the past three days. I'm telling you, it's am it's amazing. The muscle memories, the, uh, the not the endorphins, like the, what do you call it, the resistance? I don't even know what it's called. When your heart gets stronger, my heart's getting stronger from this. So I am so excited, like I did a whole hour and I'm ready to feast because that's what you can do. If you work out more, you can eat more. <gasps> Oh, yeah, you're like, oh my gosh. Like, someone help this child, okay? Oh my gosh, so today we're doing, ooh, this is really hot and steamy. Ooh, this is like really hot. Got my napkins. Ah, hey guys, how you do? How you doing, girl? How are you doing? Uh, I forgot to do my deep breaths, uh, but we'll do our, okay, so I got some Coke. Okay, so let me show you everything that we got, which I'm just showing you boxes right now. We got extra crispy KFC chicken. Oh, well, you know what we're gonna do? Is this really crispy, crispy? I like this to be crispy, crispy, crispy. So I'm gonna put it in the air fryer. I mean, it's still hot and steamy. You can literally see the steam coming off. Uh, where did I put my top? Oh, like the top still has air droplets. It's, it's good. This is the hot one. This, oh yeah, this one's warm. What's in here? Oh, this is all the extra chicken. So I got a 16-piece chicken, which is for a family of eight. Everyone gets two pieces. Family of eight or one mukbanger, okay? Okay. Delivered by Grubhub. Oh, look at that. Partnership with Grubhub. It's finger looking good. So we got, I like the dark meat. <laughs> It's funny because it's true. Oh, and I also have my um, lemonade over here, which has no sugar. It's just lemons and water. Should I call it lemonade or should I call it lemon water? I'm trying to do this to cut the fat. Help cut the fat and make you healthy. When you eat lots of fat, you're supposed to drink the citrus and it makes all the fat go away. So anyways, um, yes, I got the dark meat, which is thighs and drumsticks. My favorite. Those wings are so annoying. It's just a waste. And what's the, the breast, it's too meaty. There's not enough grease. I like the thighs and drumsticks. Dark meat all the way. Hey, listen, listen. We know dark meat's for me. Hey. All right, so we got a biscuit over here. What did I get? Oh, mashed potatoes and gravy. Um, you're like, you don't even know what you ordered. I never know what I order. I always feel like I'm halfway on this planet, halfway off this planet when it comes time to decision making. Anyways, that's literally it. But I'm sure you saw the title and you're like, oh, Lord Jesus. It's a fire. <laughs> Lord Jesus, what are you about to do, Nikocado? Boo, why you gotta do this? Just eat your chicken. Well, I really want it with cheese. We love cheese. Da dun. We love cheese. Da dun. We love cheese. Da dun. Yes, we do. We love cheese. We love cheese. I'm so excited. So we're going to dip this in cheese, and that's literally it. And today, I'm going to be answering your questions from my Instagram. So make sure you follow my Instagram, and I might just follow you back. Um, and also follow my Twitter, because I'll follow you back there, too. Well, definitely on Twitter. We do follow back Fridays. That's right, fam. I always choose four to take ten people. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, four to tay to tay. Because I thought of the number eight, that's why I'm like Tay A, but I went like this, which is four, but I meant to go ten, I don't even know. Four, five to ten people, literally every Friday I respond to them and I follow them back. And sometimes I even respond to their DMs if they even send me one. I don't want to be a creeper and be like, hey boo, kind of slide in your DMs. But anyways, um, so follow me on social media if you want more of me, if you really, really like my personality. And we're a big happy family. Now it's time to eat KFC chicken together with cheese. One. Two and three. Here we go. And then we're going to be answering some questions. You want to listen to this. Some of these questions are juicy. <gasps> Bam! I'm going to have a little taste of this delicious, delicious and creamy and smooth mashed potatoes and gravy. <laughs> it's so good. This is nice and warm, by the way. I know. Everyone came for me because in the past, you used to have it cold. Oh, it wasn't cold. It was room temperature. It was nice. It's like eating nacho cheese. 
Nacho cheese has it all spicy and nice and hot boiling by the time you get it. What did I get? Coke. Oh, Dr. Pepper. I don't even know what I get. I just get stuff. <gasps> okay. Let's let's kind of depile this because I feel like it's going to make a mess. Let's have my first... Um, I want a drumstick. This is all still really hot. Oh, oh. And, uh, oop, cheers. Oh, I forgot to do my breaths. We'll do my breaths after my first bite. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. Follow my Twitter at Nikocado Avocado, and if you do, I might just follow you back. I think I got enough. <laughs> I don't even know if I have enough food over here. Okay, so we have two things to drink. We have lemon water to cut the fat, and we have my coldest water bottle, which is sponsored me. Click the link down below if you want one. For free, coldest. Oh my gosh. Mm. Okay. Oh. Hot. Let's do it. I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm so happy. Let's do our deep breaths together because I know you might not be happy. And you're watching this at two in the morning and you're starving. Girl, why are you torturing yourself? Ask yourself right now in the comments. I see you. Why are you torturing yourself? What is your answer? I'm waiting. What is your answer? That's okay. I appreciate you being here, but girl, don't. I would, I would not watch my own videos at night. Sometimes I click on food eating videos when I can't sleep, and it's the worst decision ever because then I have to fight myself not to run to the kitchen. Okay, or call for delivery, or steal the keys when mom and dad are sleeping and go out and get my own Taco Bell. <laughs> Anyways, let's do our deep breaths together. Breathe in all of your fears and your anxieties right now. Do it. Your anxieties and let them go <sighs> we're gonna do it two times don't don't make fun of me do it with me breathe in the stress of work hold it and let it out <sighs> now's our time to be happy and one more with me hold it and release that anxiety It's gonna be okay. I'm here for you. It's gonna be okay. And again, if you're watching this at two in the morning, I'm so sorry. I want to do that to myself, but here you are doing it. So let's talk about something nice. <laughs> mm -mm. I do wish they get. I, could you? Can you buy gravy from KFC? You know how like Jollibee, Church, Church's Chicken. Oh, look at this flakiness. All right, here we go. Flaky, flaky, flaky. Cheers. I just want to have a piece without a cheese. Oh my God, stop it. Mm. Greasy. Crunchy. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. This is torture for you, I know. Mm. Mm. Oh my god. Okay, let's get into your question. You ready for it? We ate two chickens already. We're on a roll. Let's get to your questions. I have lots of questions on my Instagram. I want to get to as many as I can in this hour or so. I'm on chill. Let's mukbang and chill, okay? 
Rebecca says, Hi, Rebecca. Shout out to you. I don't know why, but you remind me of the Grinch. <laughs> no shade. I'm calling corporate. How dare you think I'm the Grinch? I don't. You think I'm the Grinch? <laughs> that was so cringy. Nick, add that out. That's disgusting. Why am I drinking soda? It's so bad for you, but it, that actually tastes really good. Yes, yeah, so we want the boxes here for display. Let's do my lemon water. Mm. This comes from Jonathan Gonzalez. Hey Nick, I'm a big guy here from the Bronx. I really want to take you for a fun time. <sighs> big guys, okay. Mm. All right, so I'm gonna try to do questions that you guys don't already know, and I have lots of, there's a lot of questions here. I have over like 3,000, oh, there's my photo, which I can't show on Instagram. I'd be a little too inappropriate. You have to, see, you have to view it on Instagram. You can't view it here. But I have over 3,000 comments. Bah. Excuse me. So we're just gonna keep going like this until we find something. Do you see anyone? Do you see your comment, anyone? Probably can't even see because of the light. Oh, there's some big long essays. Let's stop here. Have you ever kissed a woman before? Um, the answer is yes. My first kiss was in fourth grade. Behind the bushes. Oh no, it was underwater at the, at the public pool. I like that. I kissed a girl and liked it. I did. That's why, I, well, see, even people who are fully gay still get confused. I'm bisexual, but they still get confused because, let's be real, a kiss from anyone that you think, well, you kind of have to think they're attractive to get turned on, right? For example, like, my dad will give me a kiss on the cheek. I don't get turned on. Maybe that's different. I don't know. But yes. <clears throat> Okay, you need to go to the gym and lose weight. That's not water weight, mister. Hi, Jack Jacobson. Well, you know what? Did you do a DEXA scan? I don't think so. I did a DEXA 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 scan. And according to my DEXA DEXA scan, I'm healthy. What was your first mukbang you ever did? Oh, I still have to post it, you guys. I found footage of my first mukbang I ever did, and I deleted it. I deleted it out of shame because I was vegan and I wanted to like separate myself, from, especially from that crowd. I mean, vegans are one thing, do as you do, you know, live your life, but the vegans on YouTube sometimes are the most insane. Well, let's be real, they're very cultish. And so I'm just like, no, we're gonna have a nice break free, you know what I mean? So that's what happened and I deleted it, but I found it. And I kind of have to watch it through and delete the cringiness, or should I leave the cringiness? That's, that's what people want to see. Have a bite with the cheese or without the cheese? With the cheese? With the... Go for the cheese. Mmm. Let's do it together. Oh my god. I'm in love. I'm in love with a criminal. Criminal. Man, so many questions. Do you currently have a girlfriend? Absolutely not. People are laughing like, clearly you don't know him. Um, if you were to meet an alien, what food would you recommend to them and why? This comes from Ellie Jones. Fried chicken. Speaking of aliens and chicken, have you ever heard the chupa chupacabra? Hey Siri! She better get this right or I'm gonna throw her up against the wall. I'm here. Of course you are. Hey, what is the chupacabra? Excuse me, I am sp she just Siri, hey Siri, answer me, you twat. Siri, come out right now. Hey Siri. Yes? What is the chupacabra? And you better answer this correctly. She didn't even, she disappeared. It went back to my questions. Hey Siri, I'm about to spank your butt. I don't know what you mean by, hey Siri, I'm about to spank your butt. How about a web search for it? Go ahead, pull out butts, go ahead. We know I like those anyway. Siri is so annoying. She's, excuse my language, effing useless. She's the most useless thing I've ever seen. 
Hey Siri. You disgust. You disgust me. The silent treatment. Hey, Siri. Siri. Hey, Siri. Hey, Siri. I'm Siri. I'm about to spit on her. I want to spit the chicken out, but it tastes too good, so I kept it in. Hey, Siri! Google images of Chupacabra now. Here are some images of Chupacabra now I found on the web. Have a look. Look yourself, you piece of poop. And she takes me to Bing. What the hell is a Bing? I'm just doing... Chupacabra. Just do it myself. Siri needs to be fired. She needs to be wit. Spankened. And fired. The Chupacabra is a legend myth from Mexico. Oh, I heard they made a Chupacabra movie, but they used white actors. Like, what the hell? It's a Mexican fairy tale. Mexican. It's like doing the ring with. Uh, well, they did the ring with American actors. Like, come on. Some of the best talent out there we have yet to discover. Stop playing the same old crusty ass people, please. Anyways, the only reason I bring it up. It's because they think it's like some kind of alien comes down and soaks all the goats' bloods, the chickens' blood, and they don't. They don't. It, they they wake up the farmers and the chickens are all dead. The dro blood's drained, and they don't know how to explain it. And that's what they say it is. And aliens, they're meat eaters. Well, they're like us, carnivores, probably. Not like I know 100. percent Not like I know, but you know they gotta get their protein somewhere. <laughs> Anyways, let's go to the next question. God, I hate Siri. If you could lose weight, I bet you could. You would look great. Oh, thank you, Jay. You don't think I look good now? But I know I could. Yes, that I can lose weight. Everyone likes to talk about my weight. <laughs> Excuse me. Where do you see yourself in five years? Strapped to a wheelchair. Uh, how do you get past all the hate and bashing you receive on YouTube once you decide to stop being vegan? I want to stop being vegan and I already see what happens to others. I can't imagine letting my family know. Your family? Is your family vegan? Because your family's going to be like, oh, finally. What's your name? Chili Chi. Finally, Chelsea. Thank God. Guys, just making roast beef for dinner tonight. Oh, thank God. They're happy for you. What are you talking about? But yes, it was very, 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 very hard. And. It's also, um, sometimes it's kind of, it's like rational, it's like rationalizing with, uh, it's really no, it's really, up. it's, who cares what they think? It's your body, your life, and your decisions, and your health, and your perspective. Even if you had great health, both meat eater and vegan, like, your perspective. Like, I'm not going to stop just because you say so. Like, it, it, there's so much, it's a personal thing. Who cares what they think? But yes, if you're deep, for me, it was a difficult because I was so deeply involved in it. I don't care. But at first I did. It was very hard. But I'd say 50% of the people who publicly made videos about me saying how bad I am. We're talking about other vegan YouTubers. Half of, no, more than half. I'm behind closed doors, which I know about. I'm talking about six, 11 people, 11 people. And how many public vegan YouTubers criticize me? Maybe 15 to 20. More than half of them all stopped veganism too. Not that year, maybe two years later, three years later, four years later. Um, two months ago, listen, everyone has their time, okay? Let's just say. 
Oh gosh. Uh, oh, I really want to address this. I'm going to address it on my main channel, but someone said, can me and so-and-so be in a video with you? Um, the, hi, princess, maybe, but here, I do want to address something. I'm addressing it on my main channel, but I'm going to address it here. And that is, people want to be videos, be in videos with me, right? There's a reason you don't see other mukbangers do it very often. And I can't speak for them, but I'm gonna speak for myself and some anonymous friends who are mukbangers as well. And it's not every single person you're thinking of. It's probably two, well it is two. Um, who, their managers say, don't you dare do that because it's a huge liability. I can't, oh, thank you, baby. It has to be someone in the public newsworthiness that's not gonna flag my channel for privacy violation laws. Thank you. <laughs> Excuse me. And that's why YouTubers don't film with their viewers, because it's a huge, huge liability. And they run the risk of having it hurt them in the end if the person they collabed with decides that they don't want their face out there on the internet. They're going to strike it. Now, are people that cold-hearted? Usually not. But it just got echoey ever since he came in here. I just bring bad luck. Yeah, it got so echoey. I was going to tell you, I'm going to be doing something messy with my hands. So if you need me... <laughs> Look at you getting your phone charged. Are you disgusting? <laughs> no. What? Do you hear? Everyone can hear the charger. <laughs> Look, give me that. He literally just grabbed his headphone. <laughs> you better be looking at me. <laughs> so if you need me, my hands are going to be dirty, okay? All right? And I'm going to have headphones on, so I will be able to hear you. <laughs> Looking at me, right? Looking at a wall. <laughs> like it. <clears throat> How's your mental health? Well, now be a queen. Let me tell you how my mental health is right now. Ew, these taste weird. It was so nice he made this for me, though. See, he feeds me healthy. I gotta let him do what he, got, what he gotta do. I mean, I can take care of it, but that is a lot of work, and I'm a little too tired for it, so go ahead. <sighs> Actually, earlier today... Um... Why? Oh. These broccolis taste really funny. They taste like bananas. Ugh. So you know he eats a lot of fruit. He has a lot of bananas in the freezer. Do you know bananas will make everything taste like bananas if it's in the freezer? The ice cubes taste like I'm eating bananas. Let me call him. I have to make sure what freezer. Because we have a mini fridge that we got back from Orland's sister. And then we have the regular refrigerator that's here for the apartment. We're going to ask him. He's in the other room. Hi, so you're still on camera, but we have a question for you. Were these broccolis in the main freezer? Yeah, you know, they were in the little freezer. Oh, okay. Why, what's wrong with them? They taste like bananas or something sweet. I talking about them. They were in, in a bag. You just bought them today, and they yeah. were in the, in the seafood freezer. Because oh. they don't fit in the banana freezer. Well, they, well, they don't. They don't taste like seafood. I don't know. Okay, it's fine. I was just curious. Okay, baby. Um, I hung up on him. I'm just like, bye. <laughs> Conflicting feelings. I'm supposed to be appreciative. But now I know he's looking at other people on his phone. Okay, here's a really good question. This comes from Jeannie Baby. Hi, people ask this a lot. Are all your other siblings adopted just like you, your brothers and your sisters, or just you? I'm adopted, one of my sisters adopted, my brother's biological, my sister's biological, my sister's biological. So, just some, uh, see, it was a funny story. Oh, actually, I was just talking about miscarriages with Orlin because Megan came from The View was on Good Morning America talking about her miscarriage. Oh, you guys, it's such a personal, sensitive thing. I didn't know. How upset, uh, it makes sense, it was in you, it was gonna be your baby. But women who have miscarriages, okay, so that's the thing, my mom and dad have miscarriages, they adopted me, they adopted one of my other sisters. 
And then they start popping them out. And that's what people say. They're just like, oh, well, it happens. Sometimes you can't have babies, and then all of a sudden you can have babies. And the doctors are going to tell you you can't have babies, but it doesn't mean you won't. It kind of happens. And I don't want to say my other siblings are by a surprise, but kind of. But then they were just like, okay, well, let's have a couple more. But um, what was I going to say? Yeah, so Megan McCain from The View, she's John McCain's father, he's dead. She, oh, <laughs> that's a it's a very terrible little thing to say. Anyway, um, she had a miscarriage recently. I don't know, I didn't talk about it on The View. Who knows why? But, well, it's really not about her, but she makes everything about her. But anyway, they were, she was on doing an interview. And she said it was very traumatizing. She felt sad and empty. It was, you know, half a year, a year later after the death of her father. And it was just one bad thing after another bad thing. And remember when you have um, miscarriages, you have to have an abortion to get it out of there. It's the same thing. And she's very against abortions. She thinks they should all be illegal. And um, it's just kind of, I'm, that would have been an interesting discussion. Now, she's super, super rich. She's worth Billy or her mother. Her family's worth billions of dollars. I mean, they're just the rich elite. So, you know, they can play, They can pay any celebrity doctor to fix it up down there. But other women, they need the Planned Parenthood and they need some access sometimes, especially the people who are poor. They have a miscarriage. Well, they need some place to go. But it would have been interesting. Not talking about the, you know, abortions. Like, oh, I don't want the child. It's different with the miscarriage. But um, I remember, you guys, um, um, it's sensitive. I shouldn't say it. Okay, I will sign. I don't know what to think because I'm not a woman. I've never had a miscarriage. I've never had an abortion. I have friends who have had both. Personal choice, whatever people are doing, what they have to do. And I remember um, the whole thing was shook bang of Veronica Wang last year. Remember, she said the reason why she couldn't apologize, besides the fact that her mother got fired from the gym for throwing a water bottle on someone's face, but um, also the reason she couldn't apologize is because she was at cooking school to be a chef. Oh, hello. Um, but she also said the reason she couldn't apologize was because um, she said something about a baby, not make, she ended a baby and had to go to the doctor. And everyone assumed, I assumed it was a miscarriage. And then after I made the video, all the comments said, girl, I've had a miscarriage. She didn't mention the baby once. She didn't mention the love for it, the, the yearning for it, the sadness that she felt the loss of what was inside. No, it was... If you will look at what came out her mouth, I, I'm not, I'm not look, I'm not here trying to pick stuff. She got grabbed the camera, set it, and uploaded it to the internet. I'm going to talk about what she put out there, and what she put out there was her saying, "A major inconvenience. You don't know what I had to go through. You know, a major inconvenience, and it was very hard to have to do it, and you know, but I had to do it because it was a bad time. Like all this kind of stuff. Her words were inconvenience." Well, if you're trying to have a child and conceive one, that's not an inconvenience. So it wasn't, it must have not been amazing. Now, all the, all, there was a lot of women, well, especially older women, 40s, 50s, who said, Nick, and not like it matters, because they were trying to correct me in my video saying, oh, she had a miscarriage, and that's not an excuse, because my mom had a miscarriage. You know, she wouldn't treat people that way, but they were saying, no, Nick, that's definitely abortion vibes. And I was like, oh, I didn't, I didn't know. I wouldn't have picked up on it. You know, I'm not a girl. I don't think about that stuff. Oh, this is really funny. Someone says, this comes from Alec. Hey, Alec, what made you want to get into mukbang to making such wonderful mukbangs? Thank you, Alec. Oh, you're nice. It says basketball team. Hey, Alec, what's up? Fist pump me. Boom. <laughs> I'm assuming you're a bro. Bros like me, too. It's kind of funny. I'm always like, oh, really? Hi. <laughs> Um, what, thank you, my such wonderful mukbangs. Well, I eat a lot, I talk a lot. It's, for me, it's more of a uh, talking show than an eating show. I do like to eat, I eat junk. My whole story is really funny because I quit veganism to do this. You know, I wouldn't be here if I didn't quit. So it's just irony. Quit for health, now I'm darn not caring about my health. But that's not what made me do it. Um, my friend Carrie made me do it. Um, shout out to Cosmic Carrie. She encouraged me to do it. I was like, Carrie. No one in their right mind. Check her out on YouTube. She has her own channel. Her name is Carrie Trashcan, I think. That's her new channel. 
I said, Carrie, no one in their right mind is gonna watch me eat food. You're ridiculous. She goes, no, Nick. You have the personality. You have the dedication. You have the appetite. You have the conversational. Um, you have the tone of voice. You're easy to listen to. She said, go for it. People are gonna want to listen to you. I, I'm telling you, this is your big break. And I was like, oh, Carrie, I don't know about this. And I did it. And everyone requested, when is the next mukbang coming out? I'm like, and at the time, there was no other mukbangers. There was um, Kimi. That's it for America. A few months after I started, maybe four, four or five months after I started, Mommy Tang started. Then after that, Be Loves Life started. And Quantron and Food Tales, all these people started at the same time. A couple months, three, four months after that. But I, I didn't know, there, the mukbang was only in Korea, except for Kimmy. Hi, Kimmy. Oh. Oh. Um. My God. That's what made me start, my friend. Who? Speaking of collabs. Oh, I haven't finished my sentence. It's a liability to have people on your channel who are not public figures because they can claim false privacy infringement violation, whatever. And it's happened before to YouTubers. And the YouTubers have to suffer when they were just trying to be nice. And I tried one time with my friend Nadia. She did start out as a fan. That's why I was still technically a fan. We hadn't met. In well, we met the day before we filmed. Briefly. Ten minutes. She was on her way to a party. But she stopped by my Airbnb in Soho. I miss New York. I mean, Florida's great. I was actually driving today to Walmart. <laughs> yes, I shop at Walmart, okay? <sighs> mm, don't judge me. It's convenient. And it's just beautiful. The, the, it's just beautiful here. It's just so beautiful. <sighs> so anyways, um, gosh, I feel like I'm talking about a million things at once. Oh yeah, the liability, so yeah. Oh, I friend, yes, there we go. I, f I filmed with my friend Nadia, and people were harassed her. People sent her mean things, and the comments were terrible under that video. She's trying too hard, she's not good enough. Nick, why did you choose her? Out of all people, you had to chose, and I'm not, I'm not, like, people asked for a fan, I gave them a fan, and it wasn't good enough. And do you know what? It's gonna be that way for everyone. No one's gonna be good enough. Or some people are gonna like them and others won't. And the others who don't are clearly upset because it's not them. It's just a merry-go-round of disaster. That's why zero mukbangers I can think of do them. Stephanie Sue is not bringing subscribers onto her channel. Honey Eats, Zach Choi, these people are not bringing, because you can, it's also embarrassing. Like it, how do you think that made us feel when we were reading the comments? I had to look at her and be like, oh, I'm sorry. Like I had to apologize on behalf of you guys. Maybe not you if you're watching, but other people who watch me. I had to look at her and sincerely apologize on behalf of you for how she was treated. Like she was not welcomed as a as a uh, as a nice guest. She was belittled. People were saying, "Oh, she's not black enough. She a white girl. She a white girl with black skin." Like black girls were saying that to her. I'm like. Is that an issue? Like, that she doesn't act just like you? I just, like, oh, I don't know. I just, it devastated me. And I'm just like, I'm not going to put myself through this again and make another person go through this. Luckily, we're still friends and she's not going to try to strike my channel or, you know, try to take the video down and give me a minus, whatever. So, it's just not going to happen now. And I was talking to my manager and she said, Nick, I told you. She said, I... Guys, I, you guys come. No, I got a new manager, right? She's like, Nick, I told you. She represents like 15, 20 other YouTubers. Some, one or two of them is mukbangers, but all the others are not mukbangers. And she's like, I will never, ever recommend filming with a viewer. If the liability is too great, and it's always going to end sourly. She's like, they can dream about it and they want to do it, but you're better off being consistent. She's like, if you want to make your subscribers love you and appreciate you, be consistent, be there for them, don't leave them. And that's what I've committed to. I'm not going to leave you guys for a month at a time like some people. <clears throat> Alright, I'm not going to leave you. You know, show that you're thankful, but you can't. 
I mean, you could, but, and I did once, and it, look what happened. Everyone's always asking stuff about veganism. I'm not vegan anymore. I don't believe in it. We're done. I. <sighs> it's like saying, I was raised Catholic, now I'm agnostic. Do I have to go around explaining that for the rest of my life? I don't know. I'm, Who was your dream collaboration? Jeffree Star. <gasps> David Archuleta. Judge Judy. Pasta or noodles? Noodles. What is the funniest and most interesting video you've ever done? It's funny you bring this up. Hi, Nassar45. On Instagram yesterday, I talked about a video that I made a long time ago called The Crazy German... Well, it wasn't called The Crazy German Lady. It was about The Crazy German Lady. And I was eating cheesy noodles, bacon, and something else. The vegan versions of those things. And it's kind of cringy to watch me back there. You can tell I was really forced, like, oh, oh, oh. I mean, clearly I was enjoying myself. I was in character and everything, but I was also, I'm a lot more calm and just weird, like, flash to me shaving my head. In general, I'm a lot more grounded, I think. I was definitely sugar high back then. But that's one of the best videos I've ever made, in my humble opinion. Also, my story times I've been doing recently. They're very funny. The one about the Uber driver. The one about um, my parents. Oh. I have not talked to them in case you're wondering. It happened before I had to leave too. Like, how would you face your parents ever again? How did you find out Santa wasn't real? That's a good qu Oh, <laughs> Sorry if there's kids watching this. I'll skip that one. Kids should not be watching this. Mm. If you had to pick one fast food place to eat for the rest of your life, what would it be? Sonic, I think. Oh, Jolly Bee. Hmm. How did you get so skinny? Hi, Sammy, you're very kind. But you're also, I think, playing with me. Mm. Nick, teach me how to F a taxi driver. You just have to give off good energy, boo. That's all he said. He, I didn't say anything. I didn't look at him a certain way. I actually couldn't tell if he was into men. It just happened. And um, he said to me, I liked your energy. I must give out a spark walking, walking around. I don't know. Mm. This is so good. The chicken is phenomenal. Mmm. Have you ever been to Sweden or Norway? No. Ooh. Want a story about it? Okay. There was, a, um, here's a story time. So when I was like, how old was I, 21? When I was 21, I was living in New York City. I don't think I was living there yet. I was living in Jersey City, yeah. No, I think I was still in Washington, D.C. Oh, and I went there for the summer. That's right. So I was going to do a musical. I was playing violin for a musical in New York City for the New York Musical F Festival. What was it called? The New York Musical Festival. Nymph. Nymph. New York Musical Festival. And I was the solo, solo violinist for a show. They are paying me to be there and, again, make very You make no money doing that. Oh, I loved it, but I was so poor. Um, <laughs> it's true. Anyways, I took a bus up from Washington, D.C., and I had to stay in New York for about a week. 
<clears throat> excuse me, I didn't have anywhere to go and I, I could not afford a hotel or anything. So I went on couchsurfing.com to, to go couch surfing, which is a place where you can go for free. A person opens their, their home to you in exchange for like, you're thinking like, what? Look it up. I don't even know how to put it in words. It does sound weird and creepy, but I had such beautiful experiences with it. It makes you want to pay it forward when you have space and you know that someone's passing by or needs help. And people make friends. Anyway. Oh, no. I was recommended to a person, a guy from Norway, because someone asked, have you been to Norway or Sweden? No, I would love to go. Beautiful mountains, beautiful scenery. Ugh. Oh. But um, one of my friends recommended a friend. He's like, oh, he does couch surfing. I'm sure, just see if he has dates available. So he did couch surfing, but I didn't book him or anything through couch surfing. I talked via Facebook. And he was from Norway. And, um, and well, what my friend forgot to tell me <laughs> was that the Norwegian man, he was like 41, 45, something like that. I was 21. Um, had like a nudism house. <laughs> and he lived alone. But he would come home from work. He did business um, office work. He was, he was cute. Um, but he would just take off his clothes and like sit on the couch and be like, hey, how's it going? I'm like, hi. Like, I, that was my first time ever meeting a nudist. And it's someone that believes in being free and open. It's also about, I mean, actually what I think about, I like being naked. Um, I, I always sleep naked. Um, and um, I like being in underwear. Sometimes I get a little cold, so then I put on a shirt. But um, I've done lots of things naked. I've made scrambled eggs naked. I've gone to the bathroom naked. I've, um, I never filmed a mukbang naked, but I've done a mukbang with my pants off once. Completely nothing on down there. You would have never known. Guess which one? <laughs> you know, actually, now that I think about it, I could be a mini nudist. It's just comfortable. But um, inviting people over to be nudism with you is kind of funny. To me, it's just a way of get, get in action. It's like, because if I see other naked people, I get excited. I don't know about you. How do, I've never been to a nude beach, have you? Like, how do you go to a nude beach and not get excited? That's the point of going. You want to look at everyone. You put on your sunglasses and, oh, I kind of want to go. I've never been. And you'd be like, sip your tea. Oh, mm. Oh, mm. 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 And then you pull out the magnifying glass. Oh. Where is it? <laughs> That's so mean. <sighs> I mean, some of them are funny. But, um, yeah, so this was my first experience. And I never had a conversation with the Norwegian host about the nudism. Um, he would just be naked and, um, yes. And, um, well, you know, I'm gay and he was gay. So obviously like, I don't know if my friend who recommended him to, cause I did tell my friend, I was like, what? He's like, oh yeah, well, I figured you wouldn't care. I'm like, well, oh, oh, it would have been nice to know about it. I honestly probably would have said no, especially back then. I mean, now I'd be like, okay, sign me up. It'll be fun. But back then 21, I think I would have been too nervous or just weirded out. You know, it depends on what stage of life you're at if you're comfortable um with how you look and your appearance i mean i didn't get i didn't get nude with him so but it was just so interesting he'd just like come over from work and like take a shower and like walk around and i'm go oh. and it's just like dangling like i he like walked to the kitchen around the or the peninsula he's like hey do you want a drink and you know it was just like you know normal it wasn't like all happy and i was like yeah sure so he would give me oh that was my first time having what was it called it's blue i had it with eric the electric and his girlfriend it start. it's blue oh it's like a coconut flavor blue alcohol drink oh that's good oh i could go for alcohol right now i haven't had alcohol for a long time it's been months the last time i had alcohol was i think with nadia in new york city so that was a month ago Oh, that was it. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, but so delicious. But yeah, that was interesting. I'm sorry, it just popped in my head when you asked about Norway. Um, let's see, next question. Do you feel like you profit more from breakdown videos? If so, does the incent does that incentivize the broadcasting of such emotional moments when you have hours effects on your personal mental health? Um, the answer is no. I make basically nothing on my mental breakdowns. I'm lucky if, it's, if, if there's ads in there, I'm very happy. Because most of them don't even make any money. And the ads that are in there, I get the smallest little revenue share. My CPM is nada. Advertisers do not want their hard-earned money going to pay me for crying. You know, before you publish a video, it gets screened through robots. They look for the F word. They look for nudity. They look for curse words. They, they listen to your whole video with robots before you click publish. And they determine the worth of that video. Um, no, 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 no. I do not profit more. If anything, I lose profit from that because not only if I don't get paid at all or I get paid very little... But then I turn off so many of my viewers that they don't come back to the regular mukbangs, and then I get paid less again. So it's like a hit and a hit, a double whammy. Um, I don't do it for money. <sighs> I do it because it makes me feel better. Um, to me, it's cheaper than going to therapy. It's easier than going to therapy. It makes me feel better right away. I get it off my chest. And some of, some of them, not gonna lie, I laugh at myself. Some of my videos that I have out there of me having the worst day. And and then sometimes I cry. Like, honestly, there are times where I'm crying watching myself cry. You're like, wow, you're so dramatic. But it's true. Um, there's some videos I can think of. Actually, when Orlin, the Instagram one, um, when I was in Thailand, when he didn't want to be with it anymore. Like, if I watch that video, I get very, very teary. I, I start crying. Because I just, I feel it all over again inside me. I'm not going to cry. <sighs> You're obviously very, this comes from the same person. That's a good question, Raphalexia. You're obviously fairly tongue-in-cheek about how you address your body and how you conduct yourself in videos. So how do you deal with people who take it all face value and judge you harshly performing for performing for them? LOL. I don't know what you mean. Um, by t taking selfies, jiggling my belly. Honestly, it, it helps me get over it. If I'm like, it's just water away, and I, and I jiggle my flab, it makes me feel better about my flab because we're all laughing. <laughs> you know, it's not like, that's unhealthy. I mean, let's see. Would you make a video eating a live octopus? The answer is no, Jessica. I draw a bit, very fine line. I'm opening to trying new foods. Someone asked... Um, and did a different video, would you eat cat or dog? And I was like, I don't know. Maybe if I went to Vietnam, because it's very common in certain parts of the world. And those people are not to be shamed because their food is different from your food. It's hard for us to accept that just because we have domesticated those animals and given them love and everything. Um, but you have to have respect for other cultures. And um, those people are not bad people because what they view as food is different from what you view as food. Remember, I learned that from being vegan, and I'm not going to go down that path again where it's like, this is right and this is wrong. Um, but a live creature is, I dry. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the same people who are like, oh, don't eat cats, they're awful. They're like clapping to the Koreans eating live octopuses. Oh, yay, culture. I'm like, well, the dog's culture too. It's, it, it's a double standard, and there shouldn't be a double standard. Um... I guess I do have a double standard if I guess look I guess I have a double standard I'm more okay with people eating something that's been raised and cooked even if it's domesticated for some time to try to think this through am I I think that a live I don't know live octopus both of them gross me out I'm not I've never done either one of them I'm never gonna do either one of them but um I don't know. I guess if I'm over here saying you gotta respect culture, well, I guess. <laughs> oh, it's hard. It's hard with humanity where you draw the line because the line can move depending on who you're talking to. You know, if some people say, well, at least the cats and dogs were 
you know, bread for meat or they were taken off the streets so there's less stray dogs spraying disease. It helped the city. I remember in Thailand, I used to live in Chiang Mai and uh, they had so many stray, do stray dogs and then boom, they all got eaten. All got eaten. Um, and it was pushed by the government. They collected them all, rounded them up and cooked them, had a barbecue. And uh, the people were, it was cleaner, the city was cleaner, there was less problems. People used to run over the dogs and hit them with their motorcycles, because it's very populated. Um, anyways, this is a very in-depth question again. It's like, I don't, f I personally feel like if the animal's alive and you're eating it, that must be worse. One, two, three, bop it, it's done. I don't know. Same with, like, I eat meat right here, the chicken, like, boom, done. I don't, I don't want to crunch on it while it's alive. You know. It's just unnecessary. <sighs> what is your biggest fear and what are you afraid of? I'm afraid of being alone. That question comes from Angela. Hi, Angela. Next question comes from Sadie. If you were given... This stupid phone, it's always sliding around. I don't feel like holding it. I need to get like a little, I just dropped it in sauce. I have to get like a little kickstand for it. Um, if you're given a thousand acres of land, what would you do with it? Hey Sadie, that's a good question. I would plant a bunch of oranges for my baby, some avocados for me to enjoy, build a house, subdivide the rest, build some houses. Well, okay, you have to give me money too. <laughs> You have to give me a thousand acres of land, but you have to give me a couple million dollars. Build a bunch of houses, subdivide out the land. A thousand acres, that's ginormous. You know, and then rent them off or... I keep honestly... Ha you know the whole global warming thing? It does kind of scare me. I think it's out of our, out of our hands, truly, but... Um, I feel like something... People can make a difference, and I... It makes me want to go out and plant some trees. Just put more oxygen in the air, make it greener. Habitat for, for little little birdies. Um, things are more beautiful with trees. Green, it's just too much being chopped down. Um, I honestly, with a thousand acres, I would do half of it for fruit trees. I'm a big believer in that. Um, I used to live off fruits, in case you don't know, so I was really big into, like, making the world more fruity and green and trees, more oxygen, more habitat, more shade, cooler, um, blah, blah, blah. I just think it would be something different that most people wouldn't say. Most people would build on all of it, rent it all out, and cash their check, run to the bank, make with all that income, rental income. I honestly I don't need I don't need much money to be happy. You know what I mean? Like I really don't. So I honestly half of it I would make it a greenery park. Make you know, a nice greenery orchard with a little path and benches for people to come enjoy um the fruits and the nature. Um, call it Orland Park after my husband. Um, are your breakdowns genuine or exaggerated to be entertaining? Hi, Jennifer. That's a good question. They are genuine. Um, they are a shit show. They are me just feeling like I'm gonna give up. Like just raw, stripped down. And honestly, half the time where I am breaking down, I'm going through some severe OCD and ADD or some kind of mental problem or I'm having hypoglycemia attacks so I'm shaky and I'm, you notice my speech slurs sometimes when I'm eating food, but then when I don't eat food, I kind of, I need to write a book about what mukbang's done to my body. My goodness. Um, can you do spicy noodles with Shane Dawson? Hi, Kat, Kevin, Perv, Perva, Perez. Um, I don't know if he would like that. I watched a clip of him and Ryland when they were doing a house tour. And Ryland showed the bidet, which I, I love bidets. I think they're awesome. It shoots water up into your butt when you're done going to the bathroom. To clean it off and then you wipe it afterwards. It's just the best way to clean it. Toilet paper does not get anything that's disgusting. But I remember Shane was like, I don't like, it kind of hurts my butt and I'm very sensitive back there. Okay, well that tells us Shane is not bottoming like he should be. Bad boyfriend. And it also tells us that Shane would not like, if he doesn't like a bidet going up, he's not going to like spicy noodles coming out. That hurts too. Shane has a sensitive rectum. Avocados or cheese? That's a good question. This comes from Leonard. I would say avocados. 
even though you see me eat cheese all the time. Avocados is special to me. It's something I do off camera. I'm actually gonna have avocados with this. We're gonna finish my greens. How am I getting full? This is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous if I'm getting full. Why haven't you had a, a real wedding ceremony? Hi, Chicha, Chicha Duranio. Um, we were in Colombia. We weren't sure. Obviously, it's easier for family to come before in the states. We're not going to fly to Colombia. It would have been a money issue, and it's just not a priority. We'll have us. I honestly would love to do a cute little Florida beach wedding or something with Orlin. Maybe next year. I just have. I'm getting back up, up on my feet and financial issues, and I just, it's not a priority. And weddings cost a lot. People spend 20, 30, 40 grand on a wedding that could go for a house, man. It's just, and I know it's a special day. If you have the money, go for it, do it. If you have a rich daddy and he wants to pay for it, let it, okay. But if you're on your own, I mean, you've, well, you haven't met my, my family, but I have, I was living with my family and they'll help me out by letting me stay there, but they're not giving me money. They're not giving me money at all. Um, you know what I mean? And that's, they don't need to. It's my wedding. It's my, why should I want, why should I even expect, I don't expect it. I'm just saying. But some people do and some people are, are born into families where 50K, you know, that's two months of work for daddy-o. You know, it's like write it off you know so it was just never a priority and we were never we were never sure of like how big or extravagant we wanted to make it and just we never gave it honest thought because again when we got married i was coming off of food stamps i was orlin was unemployed <laughs> and we were living within his in his dad's house like it just <sighs> now um if we do get married though i would love to document it i did shout out what's her name karina the late Karina, the one that the slime lady from Mexico, she had a beautiful wedding and she had, you know how like my parents have a wedding video. You have the guy with the tape, the camcorder walking around and that, well now they're even better because they're not following you around with the damn big old tent. Well, they are following you around with camera equipment and stuff, but we have drones and gliders and great editing software. I, and I'm a YouTuber. So if I get married, it's going to be a five part series with some drama, most likely, because I'm gonna be a nervous wreck, <laughs> that nothing's gonna fit this body. I'll be like, it doesn't fit, I'm cut off. I can hear it right now, I can hear myself having a meltdown because my clothes don't fit. Or I look in the mirror, I'm like, I have a double chin, I'm so ugly on my wedding day. Like, listen, you all know it's gonna happen. <laughs> I just, uh... but anyway, maybe I'll get married when I'm skinny, when I turn 30. When I turn 30, we're getting skinny, okay? Um, yeah, maybe I'll wait till I'm 30. <laughs> to celebrate an end of an era. <laughs> of eating shit. Mmm. Delicious shit, though. I need to keep eating. I'm barely eating. This is the crunchiest chicken ever. It is so good. Just look at this. Just look at this. I mean, that isn't... Listen. Mmm. Mmm. It's so warm and greasy. Mmm. In the future, I would love to have a wedding video for you guys to be there with me, you know, in a way. Who would I invite to my wedding? All my YouTuber friends. Mm. Orlin's mom, Orlin's dad, his sister, his brother. His sister, his cousins, his aunts, his uncles. I would invite my brothers, my sisters, my parents, my aunts, my uncles, grandparents, everyone. I got married. I would love to one day. I don't know where it would be. I don't know what the theme would be. I don't know how much it would cost, I, but one day, I would love that. Um, could you make a video where you eat a lot of Polish food? Hi, Abby, never. Oh, pierogi. 
I'm back home. Shooby doo. I'm home. Hello. Speaking of Carrie, I just got the phone with Carrie. Ooh, I really gotta fix my hair tomorrow. We have to cut the hair, yo. It's getting too long and it's flopping down. Look at that. Ooh. <clears throat> We're back home, shooby doo. We're back home. Yeah, someone asked about Cosmic Carrie. No, they asked how I started mukbangs. I started mukbangs because of Cosmic Carrie, but I just got the phone with her. So this is all like nice and cool now. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Since it's fried, it's still crunchy, I guarantee. Let's listen. I want another here. Let's do this one. Listen to the crunch. Mmm. It's so good. Very salty, too. A lot saltier than I remember. Hmm. Would you ever do a breakfast mukbang? Shout out to Mackenzie. Hello, Mackenzie sixteen. Um, I don't do breakfast too, foods too often. I've done many though. I've done Waffle House. I've done IHOP. I've done Denny's. I've done American style breakfast. I've done bacon, scrambled eggs, and ba uh, sausage. I've done many, 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 many. But on the grand scheme of things, compared to all my other videos, we have done way more KFC videos. I'll do them too. I do like breakfast food, but they make me feel the carbs from the pancakes, especially the. I feel so bad after them. There's some foods that just make me feel so ugh. <clears throat> and that's pancakes. That's donuts. Um, I feel like a wreck. I'll do it, but we gotta go on the treadmill. It's funny how people ask the same questions. Like, who do you want to film a mukbang with? What did you do before mukbang? What would you do if you weren't doing mukbang? You know. Please do a day. I would love to do a day, on the, day in the life video. It comes from Anna. Hi, Anna. My favorite type of asparagus. I do not like asparagus at all. Zero. I didn't even know there was different types. Did you? If you could only have one type of cheese, mozzarella. We've had that question before too. Mozzarella cheese. Mmm. Oh, I miss Singapore. Hey, Jasmine. Jabs, Jasminico, Jas Mexico. Are you from Me Mexico? Hello. Have you been to Singapore from Mexico? Wow, far. Away. Far away, opposite side of the world. Singapore was lovely. Um, Singapore was really fun. Um, I went durian street, uh, durian hunting through the streets during durian season. Um, we went to some very famous. Me and my friends, we went to some very, very famous streets that. Sold the durian. Very famous vendors. If you're in the durian world, this is famous, okay? <laughs> I also stayed at the Marina Bay Sands, which is very famous around the world for its architecture. Um, yeah, I had a wonderful time. I would love to return. I would love to go with Orland. Oh, and I was on a special diet there where I was just having white rice and fruit. Because... Two years ago, I gained a little weight from mukbang, so I was like, oh, I have to lose weight the vegan way. That's how I did it before. I have to do it again. I lost no weight in a month. Then I went on paleo. And not only did I not lose weight in a month, but I felt horrible. I got, I was swollen. Swollen like a bumblebee. I probably gained weight. I definitely got a lot of water weight going on from the bee. It was terrible. Uh, and Orlin was begging me on the phone. He's like, baby, you're there. 
just eat your, just eat what's there. Enjoy the food. You're in Singapore. People dream of going to Singapore. And you're at the Marina Bay Sands where they have free buffet food at the, the top. They had like the 360 view of the city eating and they had dumplings and all this stuff. And I literally got white effing rice. I regret that so bad. I would have enjoyed myself more if I would have enjoyed the food. Because the food I was eating didn't give me energy. It made me like sick and shaky. Like, I'd feel better eating KFC than fruit and rice. Oh. oh my god. I was stupid. But I was also, you know, it was really indoctrinated into me for years when my brain was forming. You know, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. This was indoctrinated into my head. It's like... Like, you've learned that it doesn't work for you. You've learned that this is bad long-term. You've experienced a decline in health, and you still go back to it. It's like that girl with the abusive boyfriend. She still goes back, and you're like, what, are you stupid? What? You're stupid, and you're brainwashed. I was brainwashed. But I'm finally out of it. I have a much better relationship with food than I did back then, and I I would love to go back with Orlin. Um, it was pricey, though. That was the bad thing. Would you ever sleep with us? Lavender, excuse me, Emily. Lavender, Emily. <sighs> what kind of question is that? How do you stay so confident? Hi, Quentin. I don't even know. I just am sometimes, and sometimes I'm really not. Um, why are you so cute? Oh, thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. You're so nice. Um, why don't you have a black neck? I don't know what that means. If your birth parents want to meet you, would you be up for it? Why or why not? Hi, Gabrielle. Immediately, I say yes. Right now, I'd say yes. Oh my gosh, I actually just got an email that my ancestry results are ready. I kind of want to do it on camera, but I don't know what to expect. We'll do it on camera tomorrow. They came in, they came in uh, a couple hours ago, and I, don't I didn't click on the email. I'm like, I want to do it live, just like I did the first time. Now, you guys know, we did 23 and Me. It paired me out with a fourth-generation cousin, a, a lady who lives in Ukraine. Um, and it told me what I was, which is mostly uh, Eastern European, like 99% Eastern European. So, you know. Um, but I'm Ancestry apparently has a much bigger database. So I want to see if I get linked with someone like a secondary cousin or a first cousin. That's, I mean... A sibling would be outstanding, but if I could get linked with a first cousin, I'm closer to finding who my parents are, or were. I don't know if they're dead. If I could meet them, though, if they're still alive, yes. I think if I gave it thought, I'd start coming up with reasons as to why I shouldn't. It might be really emotionally trauma for me. Imagine not knowing who your parents are for 27 years, and then seeing them. And what if they're like really happy in like this palace in Russia? <laughs> like you, you let I could have lived in this palace, uh, you know? Or maybe they're just struggling drug addicts, missing their teeth and can't pay rent, and full of lice and you know just suffering in many different ways with drugs and um, diseases. I mean, then that would make me feel bad too. So again, here, see, I'm doing it right now. I'm coming up with ideas as to why it will not be a very smart idea. Because I'm someone that's very prone to um, having my brain messed up. <laughs> I'm very um, triggered mentally by things. Sometimes out of ignorance is very blissful for me. And I think it could go pretty, it could go really sour really fast. Can you send me some nudes? Ah. James. Are you ticklish down there? Can I send you nudes? No. Am I ticklish down there? You mean down there, down there? If I'm if I'm not expecting it and you go like a spider, like a daddy long legs, then yeah, I might be like like bruh what's down there? <laughs> But if I'm ready for some action and you start tickling, tickling the balls, oh, that's, that's the best thing ever. So, and I don't feel ticklish. Do Long John Silvers. We know you love it. I know. I have nothing to Long John Silvers. Um, 
Do you think you'll be staying anywhere else other than Florida? Yes, definitely. Whether it's on my own with Orlin, um, definitely. I don't know if this is, I don't know if this is our home home forever. It, even people who buy homes or build homes or, you know, you get a house, you get a condo, just because you envision it for life, chances are it's not going to be for life. People change and that's okay and you, you move on. Um, the nice thing about renting is that we can get up and pack her back. Well, we were here for a year, but you, you're still, you can get up pretty relatively quickly. And um, I really do like that freedom. <clears throat> and I am liking Florida a lot now that there's central AC. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's just so nice. <clears throat> when I look out the window, here's a very long thing. Would you eat Egyptian food? I don't know what that is. Maybe. As someone who's studying exercise science, uh oh, this comes from Samantha, and allied health at an accredited university, uh oh, I just want to say that you'll never lose weight by walking with low intensity and low heart rate by how much food you consume. To lose weight, you have to be in a caloric deficit. It's true. <laughs> but I can be in a slight calorific deficit if I walk enough. That's the thing. And where you have to give you have to give my size and my metabolism changes it all. My metabolism is the bar that moves on the scale. <clears throat> you know, you plug in a number on the internet, it's assuming that everyone has this metabolism. I could be up here, I could be down here. Orlin and I have opposite metabolisms. He'll gain Orlin literally gained 30 pounds in a month from having like four or five cheat days. Not water weight, fat, stored right away. I've been doing mukbangs for a year with zero exercise, Samantha. Zero for a year and I've gained 10 and I've eaten tens of thousands of calories a week. The metabolism, the way that you process food, absorb food, utilize food, to makes or breaks the weight gain. So by me walking on the treadmill, plug that in, oh, he only burned 400 calories. But you have to look at my height. You have to look at my weight. Someone who weighs 150 pounds on a treadmill walking for an hour is gonna burn much less than someone who weighs 350 pounds who walks on a treadmill for an hour. And that's before you even consider their metabolisms so that when they eat, what's happening? So I agree, you have to be in a calorific, uh, caloric deficit. But I could very well be in a deficit by doing daily walking. Considering that I've stabilized my weight for a year without any exercise, and I'm walking every day, I'm on day five, day six, I feel like I'm definitely gonna lose weight. I can feel it. Like after my one hour walk, I lay down in bed and I feel like I ran a marathon and I used to run marathons. I used to bike for hours. Like the heart, you can feel the blood pumping. You feel your face is flush. You feel like this fatigue that's so internal. I feel that for my walks, which means I am doing some great things and I'm just walking. So that's, I kind of agree with you, but I kind of don't because metabolism makes or breaks it all. Um, I really, when you're freaking out in interviews, are you really freaking out or is it the height comedy most of the time? Hi Danny, what do you mean? If I'm having a meltdown? Yes, I'm having a meltdown. Does your husband have a fetish for your water weight? Oh, hi Gian Graham. Um, no. If anything, I have a fetish for his. <laughs> You guys know, I have a fetish for his. Yeah, he doesn't, like, if he came down to honesty, he prefers me slender or just regular. He doesn't really like the chub or the dad bod. I 